glory. Because, uh, but, but let me also add, the families are being attacked, right? Yes. I don't know about you guys. I don't know what the issues you face in your family. But I know, I know this, this because I've been counseling many families now. And I know that this is not going to be an easy uh, course or, or journey for, for us. Because it seems like, the way I understand things now, it seems like the devil is pressed out of time. That he knows that the end is coming so 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 closer than ever, and, and when you observe things unfold right before your eyes in our generation, right, this generation, it is it is not only you know bothering uh, our thoughts, but it is alarming, <laughs> especially when you look at what is going on with uh, the nations. There's never been, you know, a time when one group of people would like to eradicate uh, not just a nation, but totally eradicate what they call infidels. And that includes you. So uh, they're more aggressive than ever. And so this is a time for us to wake up. This is not a time for us to be complacent and, and be carefree about things. But you look, take a look at the faces of your loved ones you know, your family, and imagine what life would be if you have a young boy, a young girl, imagine what life would be 10, 20 years from now. If this is, you know, if this is already a bad situation as it is, I'm telling you the Word of God says it's not going to get better. The Word of God says it's going to get worse. And the worst is yet to come to those who do not believe. But let me say this, because I'm not... I'm not a prophet of doom, right? <laughs> uh, let me say this. That the best is yet to come for people like you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Because our hope is settled in heaven. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. The foundation of our faith is in His Word. It is based on His finished work at, at Calvary. And so, you know, while you may experience defeat in some areas of your life, let me say this. That because God is with you, as He said, I am with you. And God said, if God be with us, and if God be for us, who can be against us? It is God who justifies. It is God who judges. And if the judge is on your side, you know what I mean already, right? If the judge is on your side, you don't have to worry about anything. You've been given so much grace by God. So that you're not banking on your good works or your own personal efforts in order to attain right entrance or gain entrance to heaven but it's all been accomplished at the cross it's a done deal when Jesus said it is finished he had already finished the task he had already completed uh, the plan of redemption for mankind and and thank God he included you amen aren't you glad that he included you I'd like to uh, give you a message today from 2nd Samuel which is a story that may be familiar to many of us Right? And this is a story of David and a man named Mephibosheth. Alright? So, how many of you know the story? How many of you know the story? Hmm? There's only a couple. Alright, so let's all stand as I read these uh, verses to you today. And our reading will be from 2 Samuel chapter number 9. And verses... 1 to 13, and David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Mekir, the son of Emiel, in Lodebar. Then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Mekir, the son of Emiel, from Lodebar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was coming to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold, thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, 
and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant? Thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am. Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall fill the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits, that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Mm. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. Father, we now uh, yield to your authority to speak to us. Mm -hmm. We bow before you in total surrender, <coughs> confessing that we are subjects unto you, Lord God. Amen. We pray that you'll teach us now mm. and help us to learn mm. and leave this place not the same as when we came in. Yes, mm -hmm. For your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. This is a wonderful story of the grace of God. And today I'd like to talk about this grace. It's all because of His grace. Amen? Amen? Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Amen. You are what you are. We are what we are by the grace of God. Everything that we enjoy from God is because of His grace. Amen. Beginning from salvation and all the hopes that we have, every promise that we see fulfilled, you know, it's all by the grace of God. Everything that you accomplish, you didn't only accomplish it in your power and personal ability. It's all accomplished by the grace of God. And so, Always look up and, and, and pay your tribute to God and say, thank you, Lord, for your grace. You're such a gracious God. As a matter of fact, every day you wake up, you have to thank Him for His grace. You know, I remember a, a, uh, a teacher in college who, during our final exam, you know, uh, he made a very surprising announcement. As we collected our, our papers, he said, I want, I want to see you one by one, you know. And, uh, and then I found out, he is actually asking us what grade we want. <laughs> so, the grading system in the Philippines in college is one, two, three, five. 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 The three years still pass. Four, you fail, right? Fifth, five? No. <laughs> you did really, really bad. The worst, right? So I said to him, sir, of course you asked me, I want one. The highest. I thought he was joking. But then when I got my report card, he gave me one. Which is a hundred, or equivalent to eight. So I was I was surprised by that. And I found out that those who hesitate to ask for one did not get one. Okay? They got two or three because they were they thought it was a joke. They didn't take him seriously. And and you know, sometimes we we think, have you ever have you ever uh, have you ever treated somebody and that somebody paid for what you spent? How did you feel? <laughs> How did you feel? Insulted. I don't mean insulting, right? Or disappointing because, you know, like you want to genuinely offer hospitality and be like, I really want to treat you. I really want to, you know, like, uh, like, let's just have a good time because I, you know, you're such a good friend or whatever. You're a beloved relative. But if, if that person would pay back and say, oh, no, you don't have because here, you can take this and, and cover what you paid. You know, oh, man, you feel, you feel bad, you know? Mm -hmm. And how do you think God feels if everything that he did on the cross for our salvation, right? 
This is ignored and rejected by man. As a matter of fact, like I always say, the saddest verse in the Bible is found in John 1, 1 11. Do you know 1 12? 1 12 says, But as many as received him, what's the promise? You receive him, you, you trust him, you accept him in your heart and life as your personal Savior. He gave them the power, the privilege, the right to be called God's children. 